It's going to get tricky. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. It's almost as important as the turkey itself on Thanksgiving, and I'm talking about a good set of knives, and that's why Lance Ambrose joins us from Service Wet Grinding Company. Been around since when? 1905. 1905. I got to tell you something. It was great to have you on the show last time. You brought this knife to the show last time, right? Yeah, yeah, well, that's well, a what, favorite knife. You say your favorite knife, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It was a revelation for me. It's become my favorite knife. Tom over here running this camera said it changed his life in the kitchen, too. Yeah, I have a lot of friends. I used to give them away. I didn't think about it, and so many of my friends said, Oh, this is my favorite knife. I was like, wow, this is something uh, more people should hear about. And it's almost like putting a worm on a hook. You give them this <laughs> knife and then they come back for more, right? Yes, that's right. Show us what we're doing. Well, we're going to uh, start by using uh, the chef knife here. Okay. And um, we're going to look at some ways of cutting food safely. And we're going to start with an onion. Which and goes in almost everything you cook. Right, for the stuffing. And we're going right. to try and make it... Uh, quicker and safer in preparing a Thanksgiving meal. How do we do it? Uh, first, something round. We need to make it safer, so we're going to cut it in half lengthwise. And the uh, onion has uh, two ends. One's the stem, the other's the root. Right. And, the, and it has a grain, just like a wood grain. Right, got it. And um, the end with the root is a bit denser, and we're going to use that. To hold it together, to huh? hold it together. First, we're going to... Uh, Chop out the stem a little bit. That's the top, right? Yeah, that's the top. Yeah, that's, I, I like that gets rid of that, that out too. of the way. And then we're going to peel it. Because that paper is almost impossible to cut. Yeah, it's, it makes a mess. I hate cutting onions. <laughs> well, no, that's number one, I, th I think you can get hurt doing it, and they make you cry on top of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So we get the skin off of there. Okay, I got one off. So then we're going to use that shape of the onion. And a lot of chef schools will teach you to, first in holding the chef knife, you don't want to hold it like you're in a knife fight. <laughs> you want to turn your wrist from being on the side of the knife to being on top. When we're cutting close, you could even choke up a little bit here. Mm -hmm. A lot of chef schools will tell you first to hold it like this right. and cut sideways. Right. But that seems very unsafe. It's and so, because I, of the, I worry about that. Because of the shape of the onion, you really don't need to. What we're gonna do is cut a little bit of a fan shape, and we're not gonna cut all the way to the root. Okay. And we're gonna have a little bit of a fan shape. Doesn't need to be perfect. In fact, even on the back side where it's a little hard to get at, you could use the back of the knife. Okay. Then when you're holding a knife, you wanna hold it like a claw. Not, not with your fingers out, because that's an easy way to get nicked. Okay. Like a claw, you could even use your knuckle a little bit yeah. to uh, guide it and you hold it together a little. And we're going to chop this way. So because we didn't go down the middle of the onion several times, do the pieces, are they any bigger it, when we do it this way or it's, no? It's just uh, because of the grain of the onion, we're chopping this, uh, the uh, same, same size. amount. Yeah. It's just an unnecessary part of it. That's what I always thought too. I, mm -hmm. I used to always do it, but then you're there, you're sideways, you're it's sideways. A very, it's it's yeah, just scary Because you're, you're trying to do it this it. way, right. Yeah. And then if you want, you can uh, get a little more if you want a little finer. Right. Uh, then you have this root part. And I wouldn't bother chopping it up. Most of the sulfides that make you cry are, are in, in this the, part. Yeah. Also, if you throw this in the soil, you could grow another onion and never have to buy onions again. Woohoo! <laughs> I like that idea. So that's, you saw how quick that was? Yeah, let's look at the turkey. And uh, so then we're going to um, look at the turkey. It's making me cry. Yeah. This uh, turkey doesn't have the uh, dark meat parts. I got it just basically for the breast to demonstrate the um, the, uh, this is called a breaker knife. It's actually a, uh, a butcher knife, uh -huh. so you don't commonly see it in knife sets. My new favorite knife, Tom's new favorite knife. <laughs> because most knives people use our straight edge, and that's cumbersome yeah. to get in there. Hey, so if I go to Ambrose to get my knife sharpened, can I buy this you knife? You buy one of these, they're $15. $15? And, and then you too can have Bed, one Bath of these. And Beyond, it cost me $150. Yes, yes, we don't believe in expensive knives, we believe in sharp knives. And then we're just going to carve the breast. You follow the bone. Right. And then you um, get the breast in one swoop. Now, this next part's what I really want to know. Like, which way do you cut that then? Then this will have a uh, grain, just right. like the onion had a grain. Right. And so... The grain's running the, this way, the right? The grain's running that way. And so you want to run it, you want to cut it um, perpendicular to that grain, and that way 
you're not getting, it's, it's, you're cutting down those right. uh, fibers, making it less chewy. Skin side up, that way it cuts through, because the other way you're just gonna mess up the meat. Yeah, and then you want to uh, slice. Don't just push the knife through, you slice it, and uh, you'll find that's a lot easier. This knife that you're talking about, that's now our, our favorite knife, you, you learn that if you slide it before you start pushing down, it cuts, it's, it's, and you it, cut tomatoes like nothing. It's almost like a saw action. On a microscopic level, it's a saw action. And so that's what you're, you're trying to do when you're, you could get very thin pieces yeah. then if you, um, if you want to um, uh, shave something. How often should our viewers have their knives sharpened? Uh, once or twice a year, depending on how much they're, uh, yep. um, uh, you know, uh, using it. And then um, they should um, uh, also always use a cutting board and they should use a steel. For every and hour. the cutting board is one that doesn't double knife so much. Yeah, 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 that's right. So this is a sword fight we're going to have now, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, these are it'd be a safe sword fight with these. This is called a sharpening steel. For at least every hour of use, you want to use one of these, and you you hold it at about a thirty degree angle, right. and you just slide it down like that, and that will uh, bring the, stand the edge up. The edge will start getting deformed fold over a little. So it doesn't sharpen, it straightens it. It straightens it out. If you want to do a safer way, uh, you're, if you're uncomfortable that way, you could do it this way too. Okay. And that'll bring the edge right, right back up. Okay, it's Ambrose. It's a service wet grinding. Well, that's how you find it, service wet grinding. Servicewetgrinding.com, we have a nice website yeah. now. They're right, and, up, right on Prospect, right opposite the Convocation Center there, right? Yeah, right, it's called the Woolstein Center the now. Woolstein Center, there yeah. you go. Well, check it out, folks. That is great news, thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for the tip on the great knife.